broken. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation. His own special people that you may proclaim the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Who once were not a people, but are now the people of God. Who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Because we have come into a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we have accepted Him as our Lord and Savior. We take our marching orders from we Him. Become we become partakers of the royal priesthood. And that is what Melchizedek introduced to us. That royal priesthood. Let's look at a couple of the definitions. Royal priesthoods. What does it mean to be a part of, as Peter said, a royal priesthood? You remember at the exodus of Egypt, God called Moses' brother Aaron to the priesthood. He became the priest of the Most High God at the exodus. Remember Moses claimed he met God in, at the back of the desert met him at the burning bush, and God said, you are going to return to Egypt and be my spokesman. And what did Moses say? Moses said, well, I, I stutter, and I can't talk well, and, and I don't do things right. And so God told him, I'll make your brother your spokesman. I will speak to Aaron, and he will tell you what thus saith the Lord, and that's what you will tell the Pharaoh of Egypt. And so Aaron became... A part of that priesthood. Also, all of the men that were born into the family of Levi, or the tribe of Levi, of whom were Moses and also Aaron, they were of the tribe of Levi, so Aaron's descendants became a part of that priesthood as they exited Egypt in the Exodus. And it became for them a birthright or an inheritance. However, you had to measure up. You see, in that priesthood, anybody with a crooked nose could not be a priest. Anybody with a crooked finger could not be a priest. Anybody with a misshapen mouth could not be a priest. If you didn't have perfect teeth, you couldn't be a priest. If you had one foot that was larger than the other or one toe that was larger than the other, you couldn't be a priest. There were so many stipulations. If your ears were too big, so to speak, you couldn't be a priest because God wanted to teach the children of Israel, that to be a priest, you had to be holy and completely sold out to God in every way. You had to be physically fit for the duties and the office of the priest. Wow. So if a person born into Levi's family or Aaron's family or the Levitical the tribe of Levi, and you came out and one of your eyes was smaller than the other or anything like that, if there was an impurity in any of your physical being, you could not be a priest. But we know that there was a priesthood that predated the Exodus. And what was that priesthood? It was in the order of Melchizedek. And we're going to look at Melchizedek this morning and also that priesthood that he introduced for us that predated the priesthood of Aaron. You see, Melchizedek represented Abram before the Most High. And Abram lived, of course, before the Torah was written, before the first five books of Moses before the Exodus. And Melchizedek represented Abram before the Most High God. And Jesus Christ is 
a or is our high priest, not in the Aaronic order or the Levitical priesthood, but he is a priest after the order of Melchizedek. And we'll look at that in the Bible in just a moment. Pardon me, just a moment. Jesus Christ, the righteous. First John chapter two and verse one states this, my little children, these things that I write unto you that you sin not. But if we do sin, we have an high priest with God the Father, an advocate or a, an attorney. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And as we accept the salvation that's brought to us by the Lord Jesus Christ, the book of Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2 says, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation. We become clean before God. We become perfect before God. And therefore, we can enter into that royal priesthood because we are washed in the blood. Are you washed in the blood? Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. I believe I quoted part of these scriptures this morning. Seeing then, or understanding, knowing, having intimate knowledge about the subject, seeing then that we have such a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Verse 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. You see, for the last several weeks, we've been looking at the offices of the Son of God or the characteristics of the existence of the Son of God. And in Hebrews chapter 1, we find out that one of the offices of the Son of God is that He is seated right now in this present age, seated at the right hand of the majesty on high, whoever lives to make intercession for the saints of God. You see, God raised him from the dead so that he might be the attorney over the Tanakh and over the Brit Hadashah, the old covenant and also the new covenant. So the writer of the book of Hebrews says we can come boldly before the throne of grace because we have an attorney in heaven watching over the word to make sure that it is performed on the behalf of those who have become the heirs of salvation. He is our high priest before God. And because we have an high priest, we hold fast our confession. What is our confession? That Jesus Christ died our sentence of death, was raised for our justification, and all of the promises of God our, pardon me, are mine. He is the high priest of our inheritance. Because Jesus Christ died, that made us heirs of God and joint heirs through Jesus Christ. Remember the word says that there, a testament, pardon me, a testament is not in force unless someone passes away. And then the inheritors, those persons who are heirs, get to receive all of the promises that were promised in the will and testament of the person who died. So he is the high priest of our inheritance. What is or where are the stipulations of the inheritance? They are in the testaments, both the Tanakh and the Brit Hadashah. The Tanakh is the Old Testament. The Torah, the writings and the prophets, the Brit Hadashah, which is the New Testament. Jeremiah 31, 31 states this. Jeremiah says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with my people, not like the old covenant that I made with them when I called them out of Egypt, not written in stone, but I will write my new covenant upon their heart. And I will replace their heart of stone and give them 
and heart of flesh. Jeremiah 31, 31, the Brit Hadashah, the new covenant that we have in Christ Jesus. You see, Jesus is the high priest over the promises of the Most High. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12 states that the Lord watches over His Word to perform it. He is seated at the right hand of God to ensure that the promises that are contained in the New Testament are in force today for us hallelujah so if jesus christ healed the sick when he was here on the earth he is seated at the right hand of the father to ensure that anyone that has faith in the atoning sacrifice the stripes that jesus bore on his back for our healing we can appropriate that in our life today isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11 Jesus Christ makes sure that this is in force. Pardon me, in force. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11 states this. As the rain comes down from heaven and the snow thereof and waters the earth so that it may bring forth and bud, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it will prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. So Jesus Christ is our high priest to ensure that the promises of God are in force because they are our inheritance. Can you say amen? amen. Jesus is the high priest over the promises of Israel. According to Romans chapter 9 and verse 4, Paul tells the Christians there in the book of Romans that Jesus is the high priest over all of the promises to the nation of Israel. We know that the nation of Israel has been in the news for several weeks now. There are attacks upon the nation of Israel by the Palestinians and they are using kitchen knives to harm the people of Israel. And that's been going on. The intifada that has been declared by uh, ISIS. And I just saw a news uh, clip just the other night where that their preachers now are holding up knives in their pulpit and telling those people to use knives. And they said, don't go alone, go by two or by three or by four and try to destroy the children of Israel. But we know that Jesus Christ is seated upon the throne of God most high and He's there to ensure that the promises that have been declared to the nation of Israel will be carried out. And also, He is high priest over the promises to the church. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because we have accepted His salvation because we have been cleansed, washed in the blood, and He is high priest over our confession. As we say to ourselves as we quote scriptures, every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. As we proclaim the word of God, he is the high priest over that confession. And that's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 1.